Okay, I think we're good on staff members that need to be here. We have public, I think just joined. Uh, Lisa, did you need to go through all this again or? I can go through it really quickly if you want me to. Okay, well, let me go ahead and, and Sylvia, are we ready? You're ready, sir. Okay. All right, so welcome to our virtual, our second ever virtual uh, city council meeting. It is April 28th, 2020 and 6 p.m. Uh, real quickly, we'll do our Pledge of Allegiance first and then I'll have uh, Lisa. Uh, she'll go over the, for those of you who weren't on last time, go over how to kind of run the system as you're uh, listening in and, and watching. So uh, let's go ahead and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance Pledge to, the to the flag. Of the United, United States, States of America, States of America. And the Republic for which it stands, is one nation under, under God, under God, visible with liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Let's do roll call real quick. Mayor Ortega. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer. Here. Councilmember Thompson. Here. Council Member Estes? Here. Council Member Applegate? Here. Council Member Geek? Here. Council Member Duncan? Here. All seven members virtually present. Okay, um, thank you for that. And uh, as I started saying it earlier, we'll have Miss Lisa go over um, the kind of the particulars of how to run the program if, if you're new watching tonight. So go ahead. All right, good evening. This is just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, most of you guys will see a panel on your screen that has a, a drop down for an audio. You can use computer audio or phone audio if you want to use phone. Click the circle next to the phone and dial in using the information displayed. There's a possibility that you only see four buttons. They will look similar to something like this. You've got an orange arrow which opens up and closes the larger panel. You have your audio you have a questions pane, and you have a hand raising button. All attendees' microphones are muted. There are two ways to communicate with the city council. You can raise your hand by clicking on the hand button on your vertical menu bar, or you can type a question into the question pane in the attendee interface. You are not, if you are not connected to the web presentation, you will not be able to raise your hand or to ask a question. To raise your hand, click on the hand button on your vertical attendee menu bar. When your hand is raised, it will go from green to red. A member of the staff will call on you by name that you registered with and will unmute you. If you wanna ask a question in the attendee pane, type the question to the, to the city council and or staff members. A staff member will read the question out loud and direct it to the appropriate party. If your question pane is not visible, click on the orange arrow to open the attendee pane. All right, and then I will hand the meeting back to you, Gabe and Sylvia. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, again, as we move forward, I will try to, uh, I've got control here as well. So if you do wanna ask a question, um, uh, the council or staff, I will, I'm kind of watching that and I'll be able to see if someone's hand goes up or whatever. Uh, if I miss it, um, uh, we've got about three or four people that are uh, standing back up for me who are also keeping track. So uh, if I miss it, it's purely unintentional, but I, uh, last time it ran pretty smoothly, we'll, we'll make sure to get through that. So um, with that, we'll move right into our agenda for tonight and we're on item 4A, presentations, acknowledgements uh, for this uh, meeting. Um, a lot of these days have passed, but I wanted to make sure we, we announce that uh, we have declared those weeks and or um, well, we have one coming up as well. So um, first is declaring the 18th day of April as Line Worker Appreciation Day. I know we have Carl uh, Christian on, on the call today. He's going to be talking on an item later on. But um, uh, as you guys know, and we've just celebrated 100 years with our electric department and, and our line workers are very important to parts of, of our pieces here in our electric department. And anytime we have a power outage, they're, they're out, whether it's uh, day or night, they're out making sure that it gets taken care of. So they're 
very integral piece to our puzzle that uh, make things run and and uh, um, you know, I don't know that we've gone very long, and I'm going to knock on wood here that uh, um, our if we have electric go out, it gets on pretty quickly. So um, we got some great guys, and we even sent some out to other natural disasters across the country that uh, um, they're always looking for our expertise. So we we head out and, and heed that call as well. So uh, thank you to all the line workers who work for our community. Um, declaring the week of April 19th to the 25th as Administrative Professionals Week. Um, as you know, all of our administrative professionals are very hardworking people, and, and oftentimes they're, they're the kind of the glue that keep everything running and keep us all in check, and we're, we get busy and all the, the business that we're doing, but uh, if it wasn't for our administrative professionals, we just uh, it would be difficult to, to even do anything. I know both at, at school and at the city, they really are a very key piece as well and making sure that we're getting where we need to be, and they're not, um, they, they make sure we don't get ourselves over um, over schedule and things like that. And they're just a great, great uh, pieces to have is um, at the city hall. And, and even during this time when everyone's working from home, man, they're, they're making sure we're doing the things that we need to get done. Uh, so thank you to all of them. Uh, declaring the week of April 19th to the 25th uh, as National Library Week. And obviously we have a very strong relationship with uh, the Pikes Peak Library District as well as our local library. And uh, you know, they're, they're uh, they're a hub of information and gathering and um, anything that a lot of people need and just don't have access to. And and our library has, has done an excellent job over these last 20, 30 years that they've been a part of our community. And, and we want to just make sure we um, recognize libraries as far as that goes. Uh, declaring the week of April 19th to the 25th is Volunteer Appreciation Week. So um, as you know, we have a lot of volunteers who work for a lot of projects around town. Um, and then just other volunteers that work for other organizations like REACH uh, and Killing Shore and all those things that we really rely on. And, and these people put a lot of time and effort into everything that um, that they do on, on their own time. And, and as uh, out of the goodness of their heart and, and they, they give of themselves. So, uh, and even to you, my council members, uh, the people who sit up here with me, uh, a lot of people think we're we're sitting on coffers and we're making all kinds of money um, sitting up in our at the days and making all these decisions. But uh, you all volunteer for this position as well and put yourself out there. So, uh, thank you to all the volunteers who work for the, the community uh, at large. Um, declaring April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, we had a conversation today with uh, one of our local churches, and uh, that question came up about um, how are families handling, especially during this time, since everyone has to stay home a lot more. And uh, just a child abuse prevention month, we have, you know, as much information out as we can about that. And and our first responders are, um, you know, they're they're great at responding to those calls when we get them, and and making sure that uh, we're we're as much a part of that as possible. And and providing those um, mental health and mental wellness, um, you know, outlets for all of our citizens, especially when it comes to our children. And, and uh, I want to uh, recognize our, our uh, first responders who have been out uh, part of the Rolling Thunder initiative that's been going on now. I think our third day was today and, and just making sure we hit all of our neighborhoods and, and uh, um, showing the good things that we have. And, and we just want to make that connection with our public. And, and I've heard nothing but great things from all the people who've been out and and have been able just to wave and, and clap to all the you know uh, police and fire that have been driving around town and just you know saying hey hope you guys are doing well and, and out there so I had the opportunity yesterday to go out with them and and uh, visit a few neighborhoods and and uh, council members I know uh, chief sent out an invite so if you get a chance and and you got a, a couple of hours to spare um, next couple of days I, I would strongly suggest uh, going out with them it's just a lot of fun. And then our last one uh, is declaring the week of May 3rd through the 9th, 2020 as Municipal Clerks Week. And we all know how important our clerks are, um, especially for council members, for, for staff that uh, need to get information out to the council and, and the citizens. Um, and again, just uh, um, kind of another piece of the puzzle that, uh, that we really work hard with. And, and uh, our municipal clerks, uh, they, they keep me in check and, and uh, we like to, to joke around a lot, but uh, without them, I, this, this job would be 10 times harder than it is. And, and I do appreciate the, the clerks that we have and, and everything that we do. So um, for all of those acknowledgements, I just wanna make sure everyone understands that, um, you know, we at the city, we appreciate everyone who, who does the things that you do in order to make this community better and, and moving forward. So thank you to all of them. Um, for item 4B, Board Commission Committee appointments, we have none tonight. 
And so I will move on to uh, item number five, uh, City Council agenda requests and announcements. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go by my list as it has here. Um, and I will start with uh, Councilwoman Duncan, if you have anything for tonight. I do not. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Lauer. <clears throat> Yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about this past Friday, we had the Fountain Creek Watershed District Board of Directors meeting. And at pretty much the last minute, I, I worked it out to get um, a, a cast of thousands, basically, to be at the meeting and support me in presenting some information about our ongoing Southmore Drive situation to the Board of Directors. Um, quite frankly, I expected to be completely shot down right then and there. But thanks to the efforts of uh, everybody who came from the city, we had the mayor, the, the city manager, the deputy city manager, the city engineer, street superintendent, the fire chief, and I'm sure I left somebody out. John Trilch was there just in case we had some communication plan uh, discussions. And if I left anybody out, I, I do apologize for that. But the way that the staff rose to the occasion to present information in a very compelling way to the board, uh, we, we ended up, instead of being shot down completely, we ended up with uh, a way forward to present some, some information to all the relevant subcommittees and, and committees, probably go back in front of the board again uh, at the end of May. And um, at this point, I believe I'm actually cautiously optimistic that we have a chance on getting the watershed districts help one way or another on uh, getting something done to get that whole Southmore Drive area back to some reasonable condition within the next 12 months or 18 months or so. Uh, and then just this afternoon, Larry Small, he's the outgoing executive director for the watershed district board. Uh, he sent me a message. He's gonna be completely retired from the board at the end of June, but he sent me a message saying that um, this is uh, a couple of projects near and dear to his heart, and he was really swayed by the information that everybody presented uh, on Friday, and that he wants to stick around and lend us a hand in helping to navigate some of the processes that are going to need, need to be navigated. Uh, we got some core of engineers permitting and, and some other issues like that. Uh, Larry said he wants to be able to stick around, not on the board, but in an informal capacity to help us navigate that process even after he has fully retired and he just wants to stick around and actually see that thing get done. Uh, so everything that got presented on Friday really swayed his opinion. He was very pessimistic when I talked to him Thursday night and then Friday afternoon he completely uh, changed his outlook on the way things are going. So I'm not gonna say that it's a done deal. We, we have four hurdles to cross between subcommittees and the board um, and some, some heavy lifting to do with Pueblo County um, because they tend to be a little resistant of things above the county line. But uh, we're at this point kind of cautiously optimistic that we, uh, we have a, at least a 50-50 chance now. We didn't get just completely shot down, but um, the next meeting, I believe, is either the 6th or 7th of May, and then we have one on the 8th of May, and then another one on the 20th before the board meeting. And I know the staff is working incredibly hard to get all the information prepared for that. And, and I'll be checking in with them over the next couple of days to see what else they need from me to get ready for those meetings. But uh, other than that, that's all I have. Okay, great. And uh, I, yeah, it was kind of, I was wondering how that was going to work out too with uh, the district and, um, and and for anybody who's listening who is interested in that uh, project, it's, uh, it's not one that's going to be easily fixed and it's not going to be done in a, in a, in a quick amount of time. It's, uh, um, it's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in, in working with that creek uh, and all the elements that go into that. So it's going to take a lot of time, effort, and money, unfortunately, to uh, um, get us to a point where we can open that road. So um, I would say that eight uh, 18 months is is really optimistic and and i just want to make sure everyone realizes that that's going to take some time to get that fixed and and i think one of the things and and i know todd's very proud of it uh, but using that drone to to show that perspective of what it looks like 
uh, straight on. We can see it from looking over the cliff, but uh, um, using that drone to really look at that perspective um, straight on really helps um, to move that conversation. I think that really helped when, when Brandy brought that onto the discussion. So um, thanks to everybody on that as we move forward. Um, so I will move on to our next uh, council member, uh, council member Applegate. Yeah, I don't have my, I'd just like to thank all the people involved in Rolling Thunder. I think that's a terrific thing they're doing and I congratulate them. That's all. All right. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Councilman Geek. Yes, I got a couple things. Uh, I want to thank everyone from the staff and the employees for helping with the celebration of a birthday last week. And I really appreciate it. I don't know whether I got to thank everyone about that, but I wanted to make sure everybody realizes how much I appreciated it. And then the second thing is the recreation center, uh, Scott, and I think uh, I think Scott's going to talk about it, but I, I need to make sure that people know that we're still planning on doing this. It just is not going to be like we thought it was going to be because of the uh, the situation we're in right now. Scott, could you answer some of those things? Sure, yeah, you bet. So Sylvia, myself, and Sam all met with representatives from School District 3 and the Fountain Valley Senior Center, which is really the stakeholder group for the rec center. And as we started discussing, of course, the impacts of COVID-19 on our community, our economy, people's jobs, those sorts of things, it just didn't make any sense to anybody to be bringing that forward um, to the voters this year. Um, in fact, as we talked about and as we talked about the long term impacts, we're not even sure that 2021 is really the right year. So it's likely going to be bumped and the whole stakeholder group um, agreed. We have probably got to bump it to 2022, yeah, which, you know, sometimes there's a blessing in disguise that gives us plenty of time to start working on um, some of the work that still needs to be done to get the information out, some of the fine tuning. Uh, there's a number of little issues that we need to make sure that we get clarified. So that's the direction that um, that stakeholder group is recommending. Uh, Sam, does that, did I capture everything you want me to? Yes, sir. I really appreciate it too. And I work, really appreciate all the hard work that Sylvia did on this. Absolutely. She did a great, great amount of work. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that's a, a tough decision, but at the same time, we just, uh, uh, it's going to be hard to ask, uh, ask for a tax initiative on something like that after all this. So um hard decision but i think this is probably the right one uh councilwoman thompson yes a um, couple of things i've they've uh, been to enough zoom meetings i think to um last me a lifetime i think probably a lot of us have gabe i can't imagine what the teachers are doing hats off to them whole different way to try to teach our kids and keep them learning um plus you're probably learning how to do the system yourself so um, thank you for all the teachers out there. Um, but several meetings on different things, but uh, one of the things today is uh, uh, spending some time this weekend reading through the governor's newest order for businesses opening up again. Uh, some of the parts are very confusing. So at the county commissioner's meeting today, uh, I was communicating with them, asking if the health department could uh, produce a poster that businesses could just copy and print up on because uh, you're supposed to have a poster outside your business reminding people to wash their hands and wear masks and stuff and uh, um, so that businesses don't get into trouble so I'm going to be hopefully uh, they'll be looking for that so businesses can just print that up easily and get you know open again on the first and then um, the senior center is still running um they are doing meals one time a week they come on wednesdays and pick up five frozen meals so there is food available for seniors in our community um if they need food and they're not a senior please call the 211 system there is food available and the 211 system uh, will tell them different days food pantries are open down in this area so uh, you don't have to go north to get food we got plenty of food in fountain and um, if you haven't uh, driven by, the county has started working on Banley and Crest. Uh, they're down there in the riverbed doing something, getting started on that project that we've been working on for a number of years. So that was exciting to drive by there the other day and see something going on there. That's it. Okay. Okay, great. 
Um, and just further on that, I know with uh, kind of the big one that we've had working is uh, REACH. Um, and they've been, uh, I think, giving food out at least every Monday. Um, and, and we've been helping, supporting a lot and, and going to get the food for them from Care and Share. So um, uh, just kind of an, another part on that, I guess, more than anything. But uh, um, thanks to everyone who's, who's gone out and helped uh, um, uh, reach get that food for, uh, from Care and Share. Yeah, and, and thanks to people in the city that are helping do phone calls to our seniors also. So our seniors are all getting a phone call once a, once a week, just how are you, what you need anything, and, and that's really, really important. Great, and that's awesome. I, I'm glad they're doing that. So thanks to all the staff members who are doing that. Um, okay, uh, Councilwoman Estes. Uh, just a couple things. Um, first of all, I want to give a shout out to all the medical laboratory professionals and pathologists. We just celebrated the National Medical Laboratory Week last week, and they're such a vital part of the healthcare industry. And I just wanted to give a thanks to all the work that they're doing, especially during all this COVID-19 testing. The other one is that we are arranging for the city of Fountain to host their first blood drive. And that will be in July. And we're looking at the, the dates of July 17th and 18th. And just keep an, a, aware that there will be more details coming soon. Big thanks to Lexi and Scott for helping with that. Thank you. That's it. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, we think we've ever had one down here, so um, that'll be a neat event. So hopefully we get some people out to do that. Um, uh, the only thing I have for today, I just want to, again, thank uh, staff and, and uh, you know, just being patient and, and, and working through all the, the kinks and the bugs that we've uh, gone through over the last, I think we're on, this is our, week, our seventh week of uh, the coronavirus shutdown. So uh, I think we're, we've got a good little routine going and everyone's, uh, um, you know, moving forward with, with business as, as usual as, as we can be. And so I just appreciate everyone who's really just kind of um, taken, taken it, you know, and, and ran with it and, and figured out how to make it work um, in spite of all this. So um, as information for public, we are um, working in our phase back into our um, outside of the stay at home and, and safer at home orders. Um, we're going to definitely take it slow. We don't want to rush into anything and, and, uh, or try to get to a point where we're just not ready or, or even um, the state's ready to go to yet. So um, we are working on those plans and figure out how we can get people back in the city hall and, and moving uh, towards uh, kind of against some normalcy. Uh, we are going to take a little bit slow this time because we don't want to, again, rush and uh, make some mistakes and then have to get back to where we were. Um, just as some another information on, on the COVID information, um, I was on a conference call last week. I was invited by Senator Bennett's office, and, and he had a lot of stakeholders from around the region just kind of giving updates. And one of the ones that was really um, positive and exciting for me, I think, and I think for everybody was um, the CU Health uh, Director for all of the hospitals in Colorado Springs and in Teller County. So that out of the four hospitals um, that they service in, in the two counties, uh, there were only two uh, people who were on ventilators uh, because of the COVID. And so that's really good news. Um, and our, our our curve was definitely flattening and uh, we had some great numbers going that way. Um, and one of the other questions that was asked and, and uh, Council Member Geek was able to get an answer for was how many um, cases were um, out of the city of Fountain. And of the known cases, again, the, the county is the one that's keeping track of those numbers and it's based on people who are going to the hospital and, and getting treated. Um, we had 36 um, up until last week. I don't know if that number has changed or what that looks like. And again, it's known cases. These are people who have actually gone in and, and have um, been kind of officially recorded because, as you know, there have been people who've, who've stayed home and, and just got through it on their own, didn't decide to go in or, or whatever. So um, 36 cases in the city of Fountain, which isn't too bad. And, and uh, from what I know, of, there have been no deaths in, within the city of Fountain. So uh, good numbers on that. And, and hopefully they're still improving. Um, granted, that was a week ago. We get our numbers updated um, uh, every week. And so uh, I think we're doing OK as far as that goes. Um, uh, it, it's been mentioned a couple of times, school districts, uh, they're both working pretty hard on, on just trying to get kids in. Uh, to their systems and and getting online and and uh, and doing some kind of schoolwork and and uh, our numbers have been really good here in, in City Fountain and the kids are getting on and teachers are able to hold some classes 
uh, virtually, which has been really nice, and and just see kids and and kids get an opportunity to see each other uh, over the computer as well. So uh, a lot of good stuff going on, and we've got I think. Uh, uh, three more weeks. I think we're going until May 20th, something like that. Uh, and so we've still got a few more weeks to go. And and I think we've also got a rhythm going. I do want to also say that uh, there was a lot of confusion um, off of the governor's message last week that um, schools should prepare for or plan for um, online learning to start the school year. Um, that was a little bit mixed up in the message was we want to have and the governor wants to have in school classes just like normal uh, starting in August. And so that's what the school districts are working for. His message was just in case you need to be ready to have the e-learning. So the directive wasn't to you guys are going to be doing e-learning starting in August. It was just be ready just in case. And and I think this this, I don't want to call it a trial run, but what we're doing now, and, and they'll have the summer to really plan and and, and uh, figure out how to um, uh, educate kids uh, in the event um, that, that we have to go that route. But uh, for all intents and purposes, the uh, the message is we're going to have in-school learning. Um, some of the things may look different as far as um, how they uh, do some of the things. We can't have big lunchtime gatherings like we're used to having, so they're, they're going to work on some of those things, but uh, the plan is, again, to have kids in schools with the teachers and, and learning. So, um, again, if we have a, a second spike or um, if something were to, you know, take us back some some steps because of the, the virus spread, then, then, that they, then we would look at that. But, again, his message, message to the districts was, um, just be ready. Don't, that's not. He wasn't by any means uh, um, pushing that as 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 what we need to be doing. So I just wanted to make sure I cleared that up. Again, I know it's been out there, but I uh, just want to make sure that's out. Uh, that's all I have for city council and requests and announcements. Um, we'll move into our public to be heard. Um, citizens may address the council on items that are not on the agenda. And we ask that you sign up with the clerk prior to the meeting. We have an email link as well. And um, we're also going to ask that you limit your comments to three minutes or less. Um, so, Ms. Huffman, were there any um, comments from for tonight? Yes, sir. We did receive emails from Ms. Michelle Thompson, Ellen Anderson, Scott Frazier, Bridget Sweeney, and Tamara Sykes, all uh, with the, the same comment and concern about the closure of Southmore Drive and wanting um, an additional stoplight at Highway 85 on Cars at Carson and or Allegra. Okay, um, so I'm gonna kind of address that real quick and I'll let Todd, I, I know he's on and he can uh, kind of fill in the blanks where I, I may miss. Um, so, you know, the, we're gonna do a traffic study in that area. We have one from, I think 2017, uh, at the time, it didn't warrant uh, a stoplight. So, um, granted, things have changed, and, and we're in a different uh, um, look at how people can get around in that area now. So, uh, we do intend to do another um, traffic count. We want to wait for a couple more weeks, uh, um, get the people who may be out and about a little bit more because of the safer at home and stay at home. Uh, the traffic just isn't there. So, if we were to do one today, uh, the numbers won't come back to support another light. It's just the reality. Um, so we are planning on doing another traffic study to make sure we could warrant that because we are still working with CDOT as a um, as as the entity who's the one that would be the one that that uh, would help us put that in there or be able to put that in there. Um, again, we got to wait on that traffic count to come through, um, and we got to wait till the traffic comes back. Unfortunately, um, and that who knows how long that's going to be. But uh, Tom, um, is, did I miss anything on that? No, that's a good summary, Mayor. Uh, that's where we've got to start. That's uh, will be. CDOT's first requirement, so we will start there. That'll give us a good background on the numbers themselves and what we're looking at. They just won't let us throw any type of intersection up that we want to on a state highway. So we have to work through their processes. We have to see what that looks like. And then, of course, the other big hurdle and challenge is going to be paying for that intersection. An intersection there is going to be at a minimum of uh, about a half a million dollars. So, um, it will take some time it's going to take the appropriate justification numbers that you mentioned once we get there even if they would allow that because of the traffic numbers then we're going to have to move into the point of where we find that number and that uh, money to fund that so uh, that's where we're at with it but we will be producing and presenting uh, a basically a history and a complete timeline um, for the public we'll uh, put that on our website probably next week uh, we're also going to use that to move forward as Councilman Lauer 
discussed with Fountain Creek Watershed District. So that will kind of show everyone the whole plan of what we've got going down for Southmore and the Carson area. Okay. All right. And, you know, unfortunately, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a bad, um, bad deal that we ran into with this, but uh, um, we're going to do the best we can and, and uh, try to get something going um, as far as a traffic study. And it may not be a light. There may be other options that we can look at um, that can get the flow of traffic moving as, as best as possible. So um, it's going to take some time again, and, and I understand it's going to be uh, rough for those neighborhoods. And, and uh, uh, but really, um, if we can really cut back on, on the, the traffic that would use that as a thoroughfare just to get around the other traffic, um, Hopefully that'll help a little bit too. And and I did notice yesterday that the, the streets have been closed and they've been, been down for at least a week or two. So um, for those residents that are over there, we're, we're going to work really hard to get this done. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of effort and, uh, to get there. So, um, thanks for everybody on that. Um, Mr. Rick, you have your hand up. A moment sir can you hear me mr mayor there you go okay sorry uh last meeting you said we had no employees that had been uh contracted the coronavirus are we still good to go uh that's all i had mr mayor yep so good to go um you know we had we've had few that have um kind of had been in an area or kind of not exposed exposed but uh um the the we had to kind of just run through the protocols and, and everyone's made it through so we're we're still doing good thank you sir yep okay um any other public or anything else from miss sylvia nothing more from me sir okay all right so we will move on um to our consent agenda uh, all items listed under consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be approved before motion. Uh, there will be no separate discussion on these items unless the council member or citizen requests, which case the item may be removed from the agenda and considered separately. Um, tonight we have items A and B. Uh, what would council like to do with those items? Ms. Estes. or councilman geek oh i i make a motion to oh. accept the consent agenda okay and uh councilman geek second okay we have a motion and second i see no other lights on um uh for approval of the consent agenda miss huffman mayor ortega how do you vote yes mayor pro tem lauer how do you vote <clears throat> yes Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes, motion carries. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll move on. Uh, item number eight is all business. We have nothing on the agenda for tonight. Item nine, new business. Uh, consideration of items removed from the consent agenda is going to be moved over. Uh, item 9B, resolution number 20-029, a resolution approving the revised and updated city of Fountain financial policies and procedures. Uh, Mr. Lewis. Good evening, everybody. Resolution 20-029 uh, is for approving the revised and updated uh, City of Fountain financial policies and procedures. Now, as you know, you approve the financial policies and procedures to ensure that they comply with all regulatory requirements and best practices as identified by the Government Finance Officers Association. City Council last approved these policies in 2014 and since then, we've had some new regulatory requirements, uh, GFOA uh, best practice recommendations, and that's necessitated the updated revisions to these financial policies and procedures. Now, we've made those revisions 
city attorney has reviewed them, city manager has reviewed them and approved them. And uh, now we are forwarding it to you, city council. And uh, I'd like to go over the, the outline of some of these changes uh, just uh, for, for the public's um, recognition and, and so that they understand. I, I realize that these are not the most exciting things to raid. Uh, I'd like to say I purposely left a typo in there on page 11 of 52 uh, that uh, council member Estes did find. And that was that uh, I had a 2.1 there for internal controls and it should be 2.4. So we'll, we'll change that uh, when we uh, uh, put in another PDF and, and, um, and go ahead uh, with that change. So with that change, uh, and these updated, here are some of the, the major changes. We've added a table of contents, added a summary of council expectations for ethics and principles, added a description of our annual financial statements, our CAPR, and departmental reporting responsibilities. And by the way, each of these numbers, such as the one here, 2.1.7, 2.1.8, just for uh, public's information, uh, that is where it can be found in the table of contents uh, and, uh, and in the document. This document uh, will go on our finance uh, website uh, as a PDF once again we make that, that change. And I know other council members have read it because I've received phone calls from you with, with questions. So uh, the, some of the other changes are that we've added descriptions of continuing disclosure bond requirements and external audit requirements, added a description of our framework for internal controls, um, added more details surrounding budgeting policies. And um, since our system no longer produces monthly statements, we've changed some of the wording around that. We've added departmental responsibility for certain line items added a paragraph surrounding reserves. And based on recommendations from Troy, our, our count, a city attorney, and the fact that all expenditures are approved by council, emergency purchases made by the city manager have been increased to 500,000 and contract authority to 200,000. We added a section regarding FEMA grants at FEMA's suggestion uh, during their uh, recent audit added a section on unclaimed property um, and some of the requirements that the state has regarding our unclaimed property. Uh, and, and just for those that are concerned about what that is, we write a check, we send it to somebody, they never uh, cash the check or they send the check, the check comes back and we don't have a right address for it. After a certain period of time and our attempt to uh, find the person that uh, should be receiving that check, we have to send that money to the state so that at some point somebody can realize that they should have had money from the city and they can claim their property. Added policies surrounding revenue management, added a paragraph on timeliness of bank deposits and another on cash basis of accounting, added the last two bullets of debt guidelines regarding arbitrage and debt obligations, obligations, excuse me, in the calendar uh, regarding debt obligations, and the last three bullet points in types of debt. And uh, last but not least, we added sections on code of professional ethics and other reference policy and uh, uh, policy and procedure revisions. So that is is what we've, we've got. Uh, so I would ask that um, Council members, if they have any questions, ask the questions, and um, I'll be happy to to answer the questions. And if not, uh, would appreciate it if you would go ahead and improve the revised and updated City of Fountain financial policies and procedures uh, with the uh, change that we will make uh, as uh, recommended by Council Member Estes. Okay, any questions? I will kind of look at the... All right, I see no questions there um, from council. Oh, no, someone's hand did go up. Miss uh, Duncan? No question. 
Oh, okay. Um, no questions from public. Okay. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, um, what would council like to do with this item? Uh, Ms. Duncan? I move to approve resolution number 20-029 with recommended um, corrections by Councilwoman Estes. Okay. And Mr. Applegate? Second. Okay, we have a motion and second for approval. Uh, Ms. Huffman? Mayor Ortega, how do you vote on item 9A? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Estes, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Geek, how do you vote? Yes, on 9B. Councilmember Duncan, how do you vote? <clears throat> yes. Thank you, my apologies. Thank you, Councilmember Geek. It is item 9B. Seven yes, motion carried. Okay, uh, great. Um, we will move on to item 9C, resolution number 20. Dash zero three zero, a resolution amending the appropriation of fiscal year FY 2020 budgeted funds. And Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 20030, um, also known as 9C, uh, is um, a um, resolution to uh, add to the budget for 2020. Now you city council adopted a budget, you appropriated it on November 19th, 2019. And at that time, final numbers for 2019 expenditures on capital projects were not available. In fact, we didn't receive all the invoices in on that until February of 2020. Therefore staff is recommending formal approval of city council to amend the 2020 general water, electric conservation trust, street capital improvements and public transportation funds for those 2019 budgeted but unspent and not completed capital projects that are now anticipated to be spent in 2020. This carryover budget amendment process is a standard process and best practice for ensuring the capital projects spanning more than one budgetary period are continued and efficiently completed. In addition, staff is now aware of certain required 2020 expenditures that were not included in the 2020 adopted budget for a variety of reasons. And I've listed some of those reasons there uh, in that paragraph. Uh, so we are therefore recommending that the budgets of the general and electric funds only be amended for those items listed and uh, in the attached summary. Now, uh, what we have done is taken the items from the exhibit A and put them into uh, separate uh, slides here so we can review them um, individually. So the following items are capital projects that were not completed in 2019 and according to state regulations must be added to the 2020 budget in order for us to proceed on those projects. Uh, and again, these are monies that, that were appropriated in budget in 2019, but not spent. So we still have the money. We still have the project that needs to be completed. So we now need to uh, budget those amounts in the 2020 budget so we can complete them. As you can see, the items here, uh, we've got the general fund portion of the two-factor authentication and data center upgrades uh, to be completed. That's 98,400. Server room infrastructure uh, of 107,000, including electronic ticketing, 58,000 for MDTs and server infrastructure, 80,000 for court RMS existing database that no longer needs, no longer meets the operation security needs of the municipal court. So we're, um, we're basically uh, improving the uh, court uh, data system. 175,150 for vehicle carryovers. These are chargers that were ordered, but, but not received. They were ordered in 2019, but not received until February of 2020. Uh, we need to finish fire station number two remodel. 
the um, uh, purchase of a uh, box trailer. Uh, and in fact, that uh, box trailer, uh, there, there's two items here that I see that somehow didn't get changed when uh, we tried to make some changes uh, just today. Uh, and I'll explain that in a little bit. The box trailer is actually being uh, pushed off to um, 2020, as is the herbicide sprayer of 50,000. Um, and uh, but we are going with the design and engineering for the Aga restroom. So what has happened? As you all realize, this uh, virus has uh, impacted a number of stores in Fountain that have had to close down and restaurants. We went ahead and we looked at by category uh, the potential revenue losses in March and April and, and uh, some in May for those closures. And we have estimated that there will be some type of revenue shortfall in sales taxes. So with those sales tax decreases um, and at the direction of city manager Scott Trainer, we have started the process of looking back through our 2020 budget and finding ways that we can actually uh, decrease uh, what was initially budgeted. And as far as these carry forwards are concerned, we're actually looking at, um, at uh, well, let, let me put it this way. When we first put it together, we had 1,581,700 of uh, general fund carry forwards. So the carry forwards that staff has now decided to, to delay until at least 2021 and not spend, even though it was budgeted in 2019, it's 127,000 for access control, $100,000 IT planning project, um, ambulance dash cams of 28,400, the box trailer for 7,000, and the herbicide sprayer of 50,000. So, uh, and, and unfortunately, when we made those changes, it, it didn't save properly here on this uh, spreadsheet this afternoon. Uh, and I, I couldn't open it again <laughs> with uh, some of the system difficulties here working from home. But the fact is that the, the amount of 1,069,300 is the correct amount. And uh, it does not include the 50,000 herbicide sprayer or the $7,000 box trailer. So, so that is the summary of what's happened with the general fund. Now, when we go further to the next slide, um, and I think, uh, there we go. Uh, <clears throat> we have amounts for the electric fund, and I won't go through all of these in detail, uh, but um, these are primarily items that uh, were initially approved when we, uh, when we sold the bonds and uh, we had the bond proceeds to pay for many of these items. So uh, we've got, you know, the big items are transmission line and future substation. And of course the uh, joint utility, um, joint use facility and um, uh, some of the other things, including land procurement for future substations. So the total that we're carrying forward in the electric fund is 13,578,175. And then in, let's see, I think we skipped to, yeah, we skipped the water fund. Hold on, this is, uh, my mouse is, is very sensitive here. So there, water fund, ah, got it. So there's still two and a half million, uh, to pay for the water operations, uh, building and water treatment plant. Uh, and uh, obviously that needs to be uh, carried forward as well as some of the other projects that again were approved when uh, issued the bonds. So the total amount for the water fund carryover is 3,420,000. Um, Conservation Trust Fund. Uh, we're carrying forward 62,925 for the Adams Open Space Bridge Repair. For free, uh, street capital improvements, there is 1,050,000 in improvements that we want to 
carry forward. And in the public transportation fund, 90,000, uh, and that's for bus stop improvements. So the total carry forwards then uh, from 2019 are 19, 782, 920, less the 312,400 that staff took out just today. Now, we're going to the first supplemental budget request for 2020. These are the items that um, we did not foresee when we put together the 2020 budget. Uh, this first item is a good example. We've had a long-term agreement with CDOT to put in a street light at Sneffle Street and Powers Boulevard. And uh, CDOT has now said, okay, we're ready. Uh, this was has to do with an agreement we made with Norwood on the uh, phase one of the Mesa Ridge apartments back in 2011, where the use taxes on that development, as well as uh, the property taxes attributable to that property, would pay for the uh, Sneffels and Powers Boulevard streetlight. Now, to date, we had 208,000 of use tax, and that was put aside in the committed funds of our reserves. So when you look at our CAFR and you look in the general fund, and you go down through the description of the various reserves, it indicates uh, the 208,000 there for a traffic light. In addition, uh, we have received a, a total of $119,000 from property taxes for that property since 2011. And uh, that would be through 2020. Next year, we will receive in excess of another 21,000. So that more than covers the cost uh, of uh, the street light. And of course, we'll continue to receive the property taxes thereafter. So the street light was something we didn't realize we needed to jump into in 2020, but CDOT notified us and so now we do. Uh, next item is the Blue Dog software. Um, and uh, we're anticipating that that will go into 2020. The e-ticketing um, uh, e ticketing software, uh, Arrowhive maintenance on Wi-Fi routers, and fire department uniforms that were not spent in 2019 are now being carried forward. So as you can see down below here, we have 183,900 from unrestricted or unassigned reserves. Again, 119,000 of that is previously collected property taxes on the Norwood project. And 208,000 here is from the committed reserves from the use taxes of the initial construction. The last item is the electric fund. We have um, fiber to new joint use facilities that needs to be uh, completed in, uh, or started in 2020 and completed in 2021 um, to enhance the city's visual image and appearance in the area there of the North Fountain substation. Uh, we uh, are having hydro seeding uh, being done uh, around that substation. Uh, there is a, a request from Power Springs Utilities for two more interconnection points for the uh, transmission line. So we need 11,500 for equipment approved. And then the electric portion of certain 2020 tech services needs to go in here 70,700, 2,600 for um, at, at the request of IT for uh, ortho imagery. And uh, last but not least, the furniture for the joint use facilities. It's uh, furniture and, and um, uh, dividers and, and a number of other things that uh, are small equipment within that facility. So that total is 474,390. So with the adjustments that we make to the general fund in the um, carry forward, uh, I would then ask that uh, council approves the resolution amending the appropriation of those budgeted funds for 2020.
Okay, any questions um, for John? Ms. Thompson. Hi, John, thank you for that good summary. Um, we all understand computer glitches. Um, I heard the cuts of $312,000 roughly, but I didn't hear the anticipated revenue, uh, sales tax uh, revenue decrease. A great question. At this point, uh, we have we have estimated it uh, to be somewhere between 500,000 and a million dollars. Um, and, and we went by category. So when we broke down the city's total sales taxes, uh, from grocery stores, we we calculated that the total amount from restaurants, we calculated that, and then from liquor stores in each of the categories that are listed in the capper. So for uh, restaurants, uh, we assume that uh, we would have some pretty large decreases in sales taxes due to the closing of the restaurants, although they are um, they do have some curbside. Uh, pickup, for example. Liquor stores, uh, we think those sales taxes are probably going to increase <laughs> based on what we're hearing is, is going on. Uh, many of the grocery stores are still uh, doing well and, and Lowe's and Sam's Club, etc. Uh, in spite of all that, um, and, and we did have, by the way, $200,000 increase in January and another $100,000 increase in February. So we're continuing the trend from last year where internet companies are now paying us the sales taxes through the state. So our sales taxes continue to increase. However, um, March, we've got at least half the month where we're gonna have decreased uh, sales tax revenues. Uh, April, uh, quite a bit more, we're not sure about May yet. Our initial estimate is 500,000 to a million dollars. So we're trying to find um, that approximate amount in uh, decreases in expenditures. We've got the 312,400 here uh, from carryover from last year. Uh, so that won't be spent. Uh, I can tell you that from administration and um, a couple of the departments that I've talked to, we've got another 100,000. And uh, uh, so we're up to 400,000 already, and uh, we've only met with uh, two departments. So uh, we've got quite a few more to go, and and uh, the goal is to uh, be prepared in case the number is closer to a million dollars. Do you anticipate having to move mon more than the usual amount of money from general funds to the enterprise fund for the ambulance? Um, for, oh, I see what you're saying. Y you mean because the uh, ambulance is uh, busy, busier than normal with the uh, virus uh, impact? Well, actually, I was, <laughs> actually, I was thinking because there's less accidents and less transports uh, with people being home for almost five to six weeks, we would have anticipated less income from that. Uh, have not calculated that. Okay. I mean, I'm glad we're having less accidents. I don't want that taken the wrong way. It's just, sure. um, it's just a fact of life that the transport is where the income comes from for the ambulances. So, um, okay. So we will be back at this probably with another update at the next council meeting. Be happy to do that. Well, I, I that's, you know, if you're anticipating 500 to a million revenue loss and we're only at $312,000 reduction, I think we got some more work to look at. Oh, I agree. We're actually closer to 400,000. And, and one of the issues too, is that since the state collects our sales taxes, we receive them a month and a half late. So we have just received uh, February sales taxes we will not know about March until the middle of May, 
and we won't know about April's results until the middle of June. So we'll have a lot. Well, everybody who, everybody who, uh, everybody who's been given a gift card, spend your gift card because you don't pay sales tax when you buy the gift card. You pay sales tax when you use the gift card, right? Right. <laughs> Scott, so. did you want to weigh in here? Yeah, I just wanted to pop in real quick. <clears throat> Our strategy for the budget cuts is just at the front end right now. Um, number one, and John briefly mentioned this, we actually anticipate, you know, just looking at, you can walk into a Lowe's, a, um, a Walmart, a Safeway, Sam's Club, and see the amount of activity is, is actually far higher than, than we would ever anticipate this time of year. And so those are our major tax providers. So <clears throat> because Fountain doesn't have some of the luxury spending that you might find in other communities, we anticipate our impacts to be quite a bit lower. That being said, um, we're sort of counting, uh, you know, hoping for the best, but really counting on the worst. And so we've really only hit two of our smallest departments so far. We haven't hit public safety um, or really any of our big departments. So <clears throat> we're going through massive budget cuts right now. And, and when I say budget cuts, we're just basically saying, look, these are the areas where we're not touching. It, it includes hiring freezes. That includes just a number of things. We're, we're looking at everything from, um, well, you can imagine anything in our budget is really a fair game our capital expending etc <clears throat> those are the kind of things we kind of have to really focus on right now that being said when we get to that point the council will be getting periodic updates on where we are as that data starts coming in so i just want to make sure i let you know that okay okay um, so as a final comment i would ask uh, the uh, clerk and recorder to change the amount on the resolution for the carry forward for the general fund to 1,269,300. Okay. Uh, so okay, did whoever get that that needed to get that one? Yes, I got that information, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, Todd, uh, you had your hand up. Mayor, just a quick, uh, I want to make sure everyone understands that that street improvement, $1 million uh, that's being carried over, that is the remainder of what we have for the moving fountain forward improvement capital line item. So I want to make sure everyone understands that's not in the general fund anywhere. That's specifically for the moving fountain forward projects. And that total amount this year, we will begin the Indiana project. So all of that is earmarked for that Indiana project. So I just want to make sure everybody understood where that line item is going. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, at this point, any other council? Okay, um, I have one hand from public, Mr. Uh, Rick. I'm gonna unmute you here, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, question is either for Scott or, or John. Uh, last year, council approved a project to where we were going to link all four of our wells to one uh, water processing plant that was going to screen out PFOS, PFOAs. Uh, was the money that was brought forward in the resolution, is that for that project? or is that for something else and is the project to link all the wells still going forward thank you yeah is um are, are curtis or mike fink available and uh in line to uh, uh discuss that further they're not on okay mayor this is john trelch I can't, speak, I can't speak to the uh, to the funding from the utility for that portion of the project, but I can confirm that the project is still going forward. It's managed by the Army Corps of Engineers, and I know that Mike Fink and Curtis have been working with them on taking the steps to proceed with that project. Uh, Thank you. Gabe, Gabe, this is Carl. Sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand. Uh, <laughs> Uh, on the first line item under the water under the water deal um, was five something million, and that is part of the treatment facility of of combining all the wells. 
uh, to go to the Aga Park uh, water treatment facility. So it is covered in that supplemental. Great, okay. thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Yep. Okay, anybody else? Okay, um, I did want to mention, and there was a huge press conference today up in Colorado Springs with the, with uh, County Commissioner Waller and Mayor Southers um, about the CARES Act money. Um, so based on, on the requirements that was set forth uh, um, by the federal government and how that money was going to get distributed, um, El Paso County was the one that, that gets the money uh, delegated to them since they had the population of over 500,000 in total for the county. So um, Colorado Springs didn't meet that threshold. So uh, they are dependent on the county to make sure that money gets uh, uh, dealt however they're gonna deal it. And so um, the message today in that press conference, and we did um, have a, a quick chat with uh, Commissioner Waller and um, the county administrator last week. Um, uh, the, the, the percentages are the county is going to keep 55% of that money for themselves. I, 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 let me back up a little bit. They are getting, I think it's 125 million um, for the entirety of the county. And so of that, it's 125, 124. Um, Scott can fix that um, on that um, if I'm wrong. But um, uh, the county is going to keep 55% of that. And then they're going to divvy up the rest uh, based on a, a per capita number. Um, so uh, we don't have a final number yet as to what Fountain's getting, but we are um, going to get uh, quite a bit. Now that money we're going to be able to use uh, to reimburse um, all the expenses that we've had to to, to do um, in relation to, to COVID. And so I think uh, they're still trying to figure out um, exactly what that can be used for. Um, so ever since we went the emergency declaration, uh, the city has been keeping track of all those expenditures and and uh, making that list uh, as we go along and, and whatever we need to spend money on. And now um, most of it, hopefully, will be reimbursed with that money that we're going to be getting. Now the, the the rest of that money, we've got to um, kind of go by the guidelines that are that are laid out. One of the things we've been told a number of times, as well as uh, they said today in the press conference, was that. Um, we cannot uh, backfill any lost revenues as far as sales tax and things like that. So um, we won't be able to use it for that, uh, but we will be able to uh, definitely um, reimburse all those uh, items that um, that we've had to spend money on that, that we weren't really planning on because of this. And so that will help a lot in that reimbursement. Um, Scott or John, did I uh, miss anything on that one? Uh, no, you got it. Yeah. Right. You got it right, Miss Barry. It was one. It's like 125.7 million. Um, and you hit the guidelines right on the money. So we'll be looking at finding out exactly what ours is. They they estimated approximately in the ballpark at 2.4 million for the city of Fountain. Okay, and so we won't know for sure until next Tuesday when they meet and and vote on it. Um, but we were you know given a commitment that yeah we're going to get a piece of it and and uh, you know if if we're really truly looking at 2.4 we're um, that's going to help us a ton. So hopefully we can uh, we'll definitely be able to reimburse all of our expenditures and see what we can do with the the leftover. Uh, Ms. Thompson. Yeah, I did reach out to three of the commissioners today just to reiterate to please stick with the 5545 plan. And if you have a chance to reach out to them, it's not a bad idea. Uh, they're gonna have a lot of pressure from a certain big community um, with that has a lot of expenses too. And I think they've um, put the money out fairly, divided it up by population based, and then the different communities are getting the amount of money based on the population of their community. I think, I think they've done it very fairly. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so on this item, item 9C, what would council like to do? Uh, Councilman Geek. I'd make, like to make a res or motion to approve resolution 20-030 on this reading. Okay, and Mr. Applegate. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second for approval, Ms. Huffman. Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Estes, how do you vote? Yes. 
Council Member Applegate, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Council Member Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes. Motion carried. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you, John, for all the work on that. And this is going to be a weird time, and and uh, it's going to be a while, I think, before we actually figure out what those uh, shortfalls are going to be. But hopefully, like Scott says, we're going to be looking at a smaller number. So we'll just keep hoping on that one. Um, I'll be happy to continue to report back to council as revenue comes in and expenses uh, get delayed. So okay, uh, happy to keep you abreast of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, item 9D, resolution number 20-031, a resolution authorizing the City of Fountain to purchase a substation transformer from SPX Transformer Solutions, um, SPX Waukesha. I'm going to go with uh, Mr. Christian. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, the electric department, uh, we've seen 2.9% uh, compounded annual growth on our peak load over the past 10 years. Um, and with this community growing and for us to meet and ensure system reliability, um, I'm asking council to approve uh, the purchase of this Waukesha transformer uh, because I really want it online May of 2021 and the lead time is extensive on this. Uh, this will be uh, part one of our Eastside substation. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, any questions from council on this? Okay. Any questions from public? I don't see any hands up. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, Carl. When when I saw in the commentary, we're talking about going in with Colorado Springs Utilities on their. Contractual alliance, is that just a paperwork deal or is that going to cost us something? Uh, no, actually, uh, Mr. Lauer, it, it saves us considerable considerable amount of money going into an alliance uh, with uh, Springs Utilities. And also three out of the five uh, power transformers we have currently are Waukesha's. So we are really familiar with them and having a resource um, with uh, a lot more resource uh, with Springs Utilities uh, up the street for uh, if we need anything, you know, for extra parts or support. Uh, but no, it, it, as far they go out for uh, competitive bids, we just uh, um, uh, joined their alliance with uh, SPX Wa Waukesha. Okay, so that joining that alliance doesn't cost us anything, but it provides a, a lot of benefit. Is that right? Yeah, it, it 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 was zero cost and uh, a huge amount of benefit to our rate yeah. payers. Hey, thanks, Carl. You can't beat that, man. No, thank you for asking. That's a great question. Okay. I'm gonna do one more quick for hands and things. Okay, I see none. Uh, Council, we can make a motion or something on this one, Miss Duncan. I move to approve resolution 20-031 and approve the purchase of one substation transformer from SPS Transformer Solution, SPX Wakisha. All right, um, Mr. Geek. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second for approval of the purchase. Uh, Ms. Huffman. Mayor Ortega, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lauer, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Thompson, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Estes, how do you vote? Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Obligate, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Geek, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Duncan, how do you vote? Yes. Seven yes. Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. All right, thanks, Carl, on that. Um, and then we'll just keep moving forward uh, with that project. It's going to be a, a good one when we get it all completed. And, and uh, if we're done in a year, that's going to be even better. So um, uh, it's funny how that stuff takes so long, but uh, it, it'll be a big help for the city. Yes, I can't wait. Thank you.
All right. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to move on to item 10, correspondence, comments, and ex officio reports. So I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see everybody here. I'm going to just go down the list of everyone that's here, and uh, I'll just go from there. Um, I do want to ask Ms. Godwin if she has anything. I want to say uh, also uh, thank you again. It looks like we've had another great uh, virtual meeting. Uh, everything seems to be running pretty smoothly. Um, and again, thanks to you and your team and, and Greg and, and Paul for everyone that uh, uh, really behind the scenes making sure this works. Do you have anything tonight? No, we don't have anything tonight, but thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, I should have started actually, uh, sorry about that, Scott, but I'll start with our city manager. I don't know worries. That's great. Um, so I just have a few things I want to go through real quick. I think we mentioned some of this, but so I'll skip over the stuff we've already mentioned, but just briefly, um, we still continue to be in our tier four as far as our, um, our COVID response. Um, right now we have the new count because of the new safer at home orders. We have the new, um, public health order 2028 which has a number of requirements not just for businesses but also for critical industry and, and governments as well so we're taking a number of steps there making sure that we get thermometers ordered for monitoring of our staff that we need to setting up our uh, workplace site coordinators um, getting all the protocols taken care of that we're supposed to be getting taken care of and then our folks are starting to develop plans to start shifting uh, back to normal as things start to shift back to normal in the upcoming weeks um, we already mentioned, but part of that shifting back to normal, part of that work that we're doing is, of course, meeting with finance. And each of those departments are doing that to make some pretty significant budget cuts uh, based on what we're seeing. Um, uh, Councilmember Thompson briefly mentioned this, but I thought it was really neat that our we have uh, employees who um, are calling. I think the Senior Center has 850 some odd members and City of Fountain staff on a weekly basis are calling just over 400 of those senior citizens to um, <clears throat> touch base with them, uh, check in, make sure everything's going okay with them. And um, boy, I think we got the names last Thursday and I think almost all those calls were made between Thursday and Friday. So just a shout out to all of our volunteer employees who are helping to do that and really supporting the seniors. Um, I just wanna briefly mention two last things. Number one, Municipal Clerks Week. That to me is a really big deal. Um, Sylvia, you know, she she's a pretty low-key person uh, between Sylvia and Joni. They're both low-key people, but at the same time, they just do so much to support uh, what we do here. Not just the council stuff and the election stuff and those kind of things that we see, but just helping support um, everything that happens here, helping the wheel go round and round. So I really wanted to um, recognize them for all their hard work because they do a tremendous job. And then lastly, today was day one, or no, excuse me, I guess today is day two, it's Tuesday, but Yesterday was the first day for our new utility director, Dan Blankenship, he's on board. Um, and which you can imagine, it's a very odd way to bring someone on board at odd time of year, um, having to be somewhat distanced from him and not able to take him out and introduce him to people like we'd like to be doing. But he's been working with um, the staff and the utilities to really kind of get up to speed on the various issues they have going on. He will be at the next meeting um, and I want, I'll introduce him to everyone there, but just wanted to mention him and we're excited to have him on board. That's all I got, Mayor. Okay, great. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to be uh, uh, a good addition to the city, and, and he's got a lot of experience in, in in utilities as a whole. But he's got a lot of expertise in, in electric, so uh, I think that'll help us as we move forward with this substation. And and uh, um, you know, we've we've learned a lot over the last few years around around water, so I'm hoping uh, I'll learn a lot in in electric at this point. Obviously. So, uh, welcome to uh, Dan. Um, our next person, uh, Todd Evans. Uh, Mayor, with the Sniffles intersection coming up during our budget uh, uh, discussions, it's kind of a good reality check for all of us on the issues we're going to deal with down at Southmore. Sniffles and Mesa Ridge intersection, um, it was mentioned that it uh, began the process in 2011, and here we are in 2020 when CDOT notified us that they're ready to build that intersection. So everybody, please keep that in mind. I think it's also important to realize that we've already got an intersection that we've been in the process of discussing with CDOT and it does meet the traffic count and the public safety criteria and that's on Comanche and 8587 as well. So we'll have to throw Southmore in the mix once we get all that numbers back that we discussed. Um, but it's a good reality check that those projects don't occur quickly and there's a lot of criteria and we've still got Comanche out there that we've got to fund as well. So just kind of a reminder to everybody that we've got those CDOT hurdles in front of us. 
and I've got nothing else, Mayor. Okay, great. Yeah, and I think uh, just as part of that check as well, that uh, people need to realize that um, there have been others that have been waiting a long time to get their projects uh, or their streets or their uh, lights up. And so um, it's, it just won't be as easy as, hey, we need one here because we shut down a street and let's put one in. So, um, uh, so we just got to keep that in mind as well. So uh, some of those hard decisions we need to deal with, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. Okay, uh, next on the list is uh, Troy. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, nothing to add from me. Another great uh, virtual meeting. Good job, everybody, especially IT. Okay, great. Thanks, Troy. Uh, Paul? Gabe, did you say Carl? Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, you, you broke up a little bit. I thought you said Carl as well. Uh, I have okay. nothing this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Carl? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just everything's going smooth. It, the leadership here is spectacular uh, with the new utility director, but Scott and you guys, uh, I really appreciate it, especially on this COVID um, crisis. Uh, we'll be able to tell our grandkids about this, but the leadership here in Fountain right now today, I think is the best it's ever been. And I really, really appreciate it uh, to all of you guys, especially the card and the gift card. That was, that was amazing. Uh, really made my weekend. So thank you. All right, thanks, Carl, and, and we consider you part of that leadership, too, so thank you for all you're doing. All right, um, John Lewis, anything further? Thank you for the gift card, and uh, thank you to IT. Uh, they uh, spent a lot of time uh, getting us ready for this, and I appreciate it. All right. Um, Mr. Trilch. Yes, good evening, Mayor, City Council. Just two things this evening. Uh, first is just wanted to uh, highlight uh, to everyone, you've probably already seen it, but we made some recent changes to the main page of the city's website, uh, created some uh, some additional places to put uh, new and current information, uh, also moved the search bar down to the center uh, of, the, of the screen on the main page to encourage people to use that. So we continue to put uh, updates uh, daily as we receive them on uh, coronavirus information, both health, um, city services, and uh, helpful information for businesses in the community. Um, so you can check that out. Um, also, the second thing is I uh, wanted to let city council know that uh, we were successful in, um, in securing our contract today for our pest control intergovernmental support agreement. And so that's a, a big development. And so we are gonna be all set to go in July for that uh, IGSA, which will uh, bring in uh, around $40,000 a year uh, to the city, to the general fund over the next decade. Um, and so we're pleased with that. And Fort Carson as well uh, contacted me yesterday and we began discussing today um, a second IGSA, which will be uh, larger having to do with construction projects. So just want to provide that update um, that that program is, is going strong and looking good. That's all I have for this evening. Okay, thanks. Um, and then Ms. Sylvia? Just real quickly, I just want to reiterate, thank you uh, City Council and to our City Manager for thinking of us and um, all these employees are very, very appreciative of the little token, the gesture, and it just um, reiterates the support that council has for staff. Thank you guys so much. Okay, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a neat idea. Um, so I'm glad we were able to do that. Um, okay, I'm gonna go quickly go through council. Uh, I'm gonna try to remember the way we all sit. It's been a while, but uh, I'll start with uh, uh, Ms. Duncan, anything. Okay, I just wanted to say that we're all in this together, even if we're six feet apart. And please remember to call and check on your neighbors. Uh, there are some people who are not dealing with being at home alone or being at home at all. Um, also, I went on my walk today and I noticed that there were a lot of gloves and masks that are out in our city. And mm -hmm. I'm asking for, um, everyone to please dispose of them correctly so we won't have our city looking other than the gorgeous city that it is. Um, also, lastly, we have a graduating seniors who are disappointed and not participating in customary graduation activities. So let's send them good thoughts 
So this is, you know, this is not the usual graduation or the graduation that they anticipated on. So let's send them some good vibes. Um, they are going through some tough times also. That's it. Okay, great. And I, I can just really comment quickly on the graduation. Uh, you know, our district, I'm going to assume White Rifle's the same, but they are looking at ways that they can still have some sort of uh, graduation for those kiddos. And and uh, it may look something like uh, the Air Force Academy. That was, that's been kind of brought up a lot. So um, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can still do something for those kiddos. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a heck of an accomplishment not to um, celebrate. So, um, you know, luckily we still got another month. And if those numbers really do decline, we'll be able to do something. And and I think everyone's on board to figure out how that works. Thanks. Um, let me think, uh, Mr. Applegate. Yeah, I agree with you. We have a football field. I hope they can spread out and do it like the Air Force. That would be nice. And Gabe, I'd like to thank you for the note inside the card. That was very appreciated. OK, great. <laughs> uh, great. Um, Mr. Geek. I would like to thank everyone and um, I hope everybody stays safe and make sure you do what you need to be doing. Thank you. All right. Uh, on my other side, Ms. Estes. I don't have anything. Just want to thank the leadership for everything that's going on and thanks, Gabe, for getting the card out to us. We did appreciate it. All right. Uh, Mr. Lauer. I just wanted to say thanks for uh, joining the call with Restoration this morning and uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, and, and to also uh, Chief Ever. Thanks to the staff for again and continuing to rise to the occasion, uh, not you know, and not just with a a virtual meeting, but with everything that is still being accomplished day to day within the city. Um, I really do appreciate that, and and all the neighbors that I've talked to, they how much they appreciate um, how much is still being done as well. So they asked me to pass that along. Just wanted to make sure I did. Okay, Miss um, Thompson. Yeah, I want to make sure everybody knows that the Great American Cleanup Day was canceled for this year, which would have normally been uh, the first Saturday in May. However, feel free to pick up a bag of trash uh, when you're out walking around the city, and um, keep help keep us all clean. That would really help the staff. And then also, I don't is Carl still on the line? Uh, yes, ma'am. I was just wondering where we were with the line man statue. Oh, that's a great question. I should have talked about that. I uh, got notified today. It is complete. Our monument is complete. I was going to meet with Curtis and, and the communications team uh, tomorrow. Uh, the monument's done, and now we just need to look for uh, a day to uh, present it. So it's in Fountain? Oh, no, no, it's still up in Windsor, Colorado. Uh, oh, we just okay. got pictures and notified today, as a matter of fact, it, oh. that it is complete. And uh, so we're going to, we have to get him his final payment and um, then he'll deliver it. And then, then you know, once we get a day figured out, um, I'd love it if everybody came out and uh, supported it. And And just to reiterate, Carl, that with no city funds, right? None, zero. This was all, um, it was all re uh, fundraising. Okay, everything great. Thank you, Carl. I, good, I, you were here, so I took the opportunity. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing that up. I was going to touch on it tonight and uh, forgot about it. So thank you. Okay, anything else, Ms. Thompson? Oh, she closed down. Okay. Um, so uh, I think that's it. The only thing, uh, I have, and I'm, I'm very thankful. Uh, a, a work friend sent me earlier. I think it was last week, actually. Um, there was a planning commission meeting. It was on. It was a virtual meeting in Vallejo, California. And uh, I don't know what was going on, but one of the commissioners uh, got so angry that he threw his cat while he was on video and had to resign from the commission. So um, we haven't had any of those yet in this, these last couple of meetings. And, and uh, so I just uh, asked the uh, council members when you uh, um, are on our council meeting, just keep your pets out of the room and then it will be safe there. But it was just kind of a funny uh, thing that they sent to me that uh, they, they checked their cat across the room and, and they had a on video. So, um, but uh, I do appreciate everyone as we moved 
uh, through this meeting and, and um, good productive meeting, even though we have to do it virtually. Again, not my uh, choice of, of doing these meetings, but in the time being, we'll, we'll go ahead and continue doing this um, to see how it goes. Uh, thanks to everyone um, for doing their part and you know moving us uh, closer to that uh, flat line. And, and uh, again, I hope we get there sooner rather than later. Um, and staff and and citizens and everybody alike, I just I wish you all the best. And um, our next meeting is going to be oh we have no executive sessions our next meeting will be may 12th 2020 um, if you need any further infor information on anything going on in the city please go to the website at uh, fountaincolorado.org uh, i will consider our meeting adjourned and we'll see you then take care